Professional Technology, uh, Jay Reynolds, Chief Technology Officer for Stripper Solutions. Uh, he's got a Blackstone oil production system. This is more complicated than the production system. And now for something completely different. You're here from the media. This is your Man Bites Dog story. This is a story of how a small inventor told very briefly, came up with a new production system and had it fostered and brought to market by the world's largest, best possible partner, Parker Hennepin Corporation, instead of being eaten alive, which is what normally happens. Well, that wasn't my first slide, but that'll work. I am that small oil producer. My name is Jay Reynolds. I operate near Vivian, Louisiana. And I was basically forced to invent this new way of operating our production because I was being eaten alive by work over rig cost. Our labor market up there is really tough. If you can drug test, you're working for somebody else. So I had to have a safe system. That's the way it is. We had to have a safe system. I needed to solve all of my problems. I got rid of everything that leaked, corroded, and broke in one fell swoop. We now have a system where nothing can corrode, which has only <laughs> one moving part, which is one man deployable, and which lifts fluid at less than half the cost of a beam pump. This is what I had a lot of when I came to work. I had about 80 well bores that needed equipment. I've now got more than that. I've adopted quite a few. This whole process started because I was out on the lease one morning, saw my workover contractor at work, and every day he worked was the day I lost money. So I asked myself, why do I need this guy? The answer was, because, duh, you've got steel tubing. And the next question was, why do I have steel tubing? And I'm standing here with one foot in 1930s oil field, and it's 2006, thinking there's got to be some opportunity here for a little bit of simple technology transfer. So I began experimenting with flexible tubing. We started with a lay flat tubing out of South Africa that was made for dewatering mines. If you've ever run ESPs on steel tubing, you know you have the issue of strapping on the ESP cable onto the tubing. But that's how this was done. At first we did it laying a thousand feet of it out through the woods, tying it onto the front of a pickup truck, driving forward, trying to maneuver it into the ground. This is not as simple as it is now. Next, I went to a 3,000 PSI hose made by Parker Hannafin. This was a sewer cleaning hose. It was very durable. I put a stainless steel cable on the inside of it to keep it from stretching, strapped an ESP cable onto the outside, and began running it off of a truck. The toughest application for anything you can do with a hose is continuous over the shift duty. I had hundreds of well bores which had been open to the weather for years. I ran this in repeatedly, so every day I was able to simulate three or four service events. In the course of a couple of years, I was able to run tubing, simulating on a single piece of tubing, more than 500 years of mechanical wear. I do not need my tubing to last 500 years if it will last 10 years. If I never see another work over rig for 10 years, I promise to retire. <laughs> this is Mike Swayer. He was, at the time, the chief engineer of Parker Hannafin's Parflex division. I got lucky. I got Mike on the phone. Mike said, what are you doing this for? I explained how all wells were produced, where I live. He said, well, so? I said, we need 40 million lineal feet of tubing in my immediate neighborhood. They dropped what they were doing. We started building prototypes on November the 7th, 2006. We stood on the side of the Pine Island Road in my field. If you're in the field afternoon on a Friday, you are up to something. <laughs> the road was lined with trucks. People started showing up with ice chests. An impromptu party ensued. This was the first variant of black storm tubing. And into the tank went pipeline ball crude oil, which is a big deal because normally we produce, I am not kidding you, 1,000 barrels of water to get a barrel of oil. If my economics, I can make this work, and it changed my life. If it works for me, it will work 10 times better for anybody who has even a 1% oil cut. This was a big deal where I come from. Ran the tubing off the truck. Uh, this is our operator sitting in the rocking chair. As we ran this over and over and over, the idea was to see how long it would last. 
In being able to retrieve oil out of our casing as we have done, we lowered our lifting cost at a time when we really needed money from 35 bucks a barrel to about $5 a barrel. So to recap, in one fell swoop, we have come up with a system with one moving part. I don't care how you want to move fluid. I haven't figured out how to do it with less than one moving part somewhere. <laughs> there is nothing to corrode in this system. Everything is stainless steel or purpose-built engineered thermoplastic. I have some of it here. It is literally true that if you can unwind fishing line off of a bait casting reel, and you have every kind of personal challenge you can imagine, you can be taught to operate this system safely in less than one hour. My cost of doing the most expensive, most complex work of it has gone from 16 man hours, that's four guys with one set of teeth, sorry, working <laughs> four hours, to do a barrel job. I can do that now with one guy working less than 45 minutes with nothing heavy over his head. It is an environmentally clean system. I don't just need to survive, I need to be more profitable. There are tens of thousands of operators like myself who care for the hundreds of thousands of stripper wells throughout the United States. We repair them, we repair them, we take care of them as needed, and if we aren't here, who's going to do that? For an administration that has a green environmental bias, they need to think of this. If I'm out of business, who's going to take care of these wells? It's not just that, but if I'm going to be in business, I need to be more profitable. And to stay in business, I had to change the game. I had to change the game because we all play a losing game. Each year we spend more kilowatts to make less oil. So my charge was threefold. I needed a way to less, uh, less expensively equip and produce my wells. The next technology I'll debut is site-specific cost-effective enhanced oil recovery for my 105-year-old field, which has never had any. And third, we'll lower the cost of doing oil water separation. The stripper well industry is neglected. The opportunities for technology transfer are enormous. I salute Parker Hannifin Corporation for realizing that we needed help. What the oil produced by small domestic operators means to our domestic energy security. And moreover, what the money we create, the measly million dollars I produce in oil a year, is, turns over 15 times in my local community according to LSUS. So by myself, as a pissant operator, <laughs> I generate $15 million a year of economic stimulus. That's a level of efficiency that no government program will ever equal. Multiplied by thousands of operators, that's tens and hundreds of billions of dollars in taxes and wages and revenues and royalties. We need to stay in business. We need to be more profitable. We have had every kind of solution for the symptoms, but there has been nothing to treat the disease. And I'm delighted to have the partners I have. Thank you. We are in booth 267. We have distributor ships in Texas and Oklahoma. The rest of the world is up for grabs. Don't talk to us. <laughs>